Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel, Creative Grandma. Are you looking for a quick, fun and easy crochet project? Well, how about Grandma's favorite dishcloth? This pattern is super quick and easy. It's an excellent pattern for a beginner and it's oh so pretty no matter what color you make the dishcloth in. So let me grab my tape measure and we'll take some measurements. This dishcloth measures about eight and three fourths inches across by about eight inches tall. So I made the dishcloth in four different colors so you can see how pretty it looks no matter what color you use. This first color is a beautiful mint green. The second dishcloth is made in this beautiful solid yellow. Then we have the orange dishcloth and this is such a pretty shade of orange. And then the last one I made, I was having so much fun, I decided to make a pink one as well. I wanted to create just something quick and easy and fun, but something with just a little bit of design to it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me tell you everything you're going to need to make this dishcloth today. For our project today, I'm using the Lion Brand Yarns 24-7 Cotton. Now when you look at this yarn, you're going to see this yarn has a little bit tighter weave than most of those cotton yarns you see that people use for their kitchen crocheted items. I love that it has the tighter weave to the yarn because it gives you great stitch definition. Now Lion Brand has many beautiful colorways in this yarn, just like the ones I showed you in the beginning where I showed you all my dishcloths that I made and today I'm going to be using this color for the crochet tutorial. Now one skein of yarn should be enough to make two of the dishcloths. Now this yarn comes in a 3.5 ounce 100 gram 186 yards or 170 meter skein. The yarn is classified as a number four medium weight yarn it's 100% mercerized cotton and it's machine wash and dryable. This yarn is made in Mexico and the color today that I'm using for our tutorial is color number 156 mint. You're also going to need a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. Now I'll put a special link in the description box that will take you directly to the Lion Brand 24-7 cotton if you wish to purchase your yarn for this tutorial or if you just want to view the different colorways that they have. Now this link is an affiliate link. I am an affiliate of Lion Brand Yarns. I use their yarns in many of my designs and when you use those affiliate links it just helps me earn a few cents on the purchases that you make to help me be able to buy more yarn to create more projects. So thank you everyone who uses those affiliate links. So go ahead, grab your yarn, grab your hook, and let's get this project started. To begin our project, we're going to chain 28. Now I already attached my yarn to my hook and I used a double knot. You can use a slip knot if you wish. This is the way my grandmother taught me and that's just how I do it. We're going to begin and we're going to chain 28. You're going to yarn over the hook, pull it through the loop on your hook, and this creates your first chain. The loop on your hook does not count as a chain. That's one, two, three, four, five, continue until you have 28 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I'm back, I have my chain with 28 chains and now we're ready to begin row one. For row one, we're going to work a simple single crochet row and I wanna remind all my viewers and subscribers that I use USA crochet terms in my tutorials. We're going to skip this first chain and into the second chain from hook, you're going to insert your hook and work a single crochet. Yarn over, pull back through that chain. You have two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made a single crochet. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. Insert into the next chain, work a single crochet. So go ahead and continue. You're going to insert into the next stitch, 
work a single crochet. You're going to continue and work one single crochet in each chain across and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one. We worked one single crochet in each chain across. So if you're new to crocheting, then go ahead and put a stitch marker right into the top of the last stitch that you made. And then come back to the beginning of the row and put a stitch marker right into the top of the first stitch. This way you'll know where the beginning and ending of each row will be. So very important when you're new to crocheting. So now we're ready to begin row two. So row one was our base row and rows two through five will be our repeat row. So let's begin row two. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. Your beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work a half double crochet into that first single crochet. Yarn over, skip that beginning chain one, insert under the top two loops of that first single crochet. You're going to yarn over, pull back through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You just made a half double crochet. Now we're ready to begin our repeat. You're going to skip the next stitch and work two half double crochet into the next stitch. One, and two, and that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. Skip the next stitch and work two half double crochet into the next stitch. One, and two. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and continue, skip the next stitch, and work two half double crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that to the end of the row, and I'll meet you at the end of row two. I'm over at the end of row two. This is what your work should look like. You should have ended your last repeat in the very last stitch. You should have a total of 27 stitches across your work. You have one half double crochet starting the row and you end with two half double crochet. So again, you should have a total of 27 half double crochet stitches. So row two is finished. Now we're going to begin row three. For row three, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert under the top two loops of that very first stitch, work a single crochet. And now we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Make sure you're going under the top two loops work your single crochet. And if you're new to crocheting, make sure you remember that a half double crochet, it looks like the top of the stitch here, but that's not the top of the stitch. Make sure you're turning your work toward you and going under these two loops here. So again, if you look, you can see three loops. You want to go under the top two, not the side loop. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Now remember to move your stitch marker up to that very first stitch of the row and then continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of the row. I'm over at the end of row three. We worked one single crochet in each stitch across and you should end with a single crochet into the last stitch where you have your stitch marker. Go ahead and move your stitch marker up to that last stitch worked. You're going to have a total of 27 single crochet. So now we're ready to begin row four. Row four, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the top two loops of that first stitch, work a single crochet. So for row four, we're just working one single crochet in each stitch across, same as the last row. Single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet 
in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row four. I'm over at the end of row four. This is what your work should look like. We worked one single crochet in each stitch across. You're going to have a total of 27 single crochet stitches and make sure that you're moving your stitch markers up to the very first and last stitch of the row if you're new to crocheting. So now we're ready to begin row five. For row five, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the very first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row five. So I'm over at the end of row five. This is what your work should look like. Now if you're new to crocheting, make sure you move those stitch markers up to the first and the last stitch of the row. You should have a total of 27 stitches across. And now to continue working on your dishcloth, you're going to jump back on the video, start at the beginning of row two, and repeat row two through row five a total of five more times for your dishcloth. So again, to continue working on your dishcloth, skip back on the video, start at the beginning of row two, and work rows two through five a total of five more times. I'll meet you at the end of row 25. I'm over at the end of row 25 and when you look at your dishcloth, we repeated rows two through row five, five more times. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So now to end our dishcloth, we're going to repeat rows two and row three again. So we have one row of the half double crochet and one row of the single crochet, reversing it so it looks the same on both sides. So again, you should be at the end of row 25 and you should have repeated rows two through five, five more times. So let's go ahead and begin row 26. For row 26, we're just going to repeat row two. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. Your beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work one half double crochet into the very first stitch going under the top two loops. Work your half double crochet. Now we're going to start our repeat. You're going to skip the next stitch and into this next stitch work two half double crochets. One and two. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's do the repeat again. You're going to yarn over, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, and work two half double crochets. One and two. Let's do it again. Skip the next stitch and into the next stitch, work two half double crochets. One and two. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and continue. You're going to skip the next stitch and into the next stitch, work two half double crochet. Repeat that across and I'll meet you at the end of row 26. I'm over at the end of row 26. This is what your work should look like. You should have a total of 27 half double crochet stitches across. So now we're ready to begin row 27. You're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip the beginning chain one. You're going to insert into the top of the very next stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet single crochet into the next stitch and remember to go into the top two loops and not the side loops. Make sure you're turning your work and you're going under the correct two loops. Work a single crochet. 
single crochet into the next stitch and remember go under the top two loops and not in the side loop you want to make sure you're turning your work insert under the top two loops work a single crochet so go ahead and continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across and I'll meet you at the end of row 27 I'm over at the end this is what our dishcloth looks like now if you do not like putting borders on your dishcloth you can fasten off right here and just call it a day and this will be your dishcloth now I like to put a final border around my dishcloth so if you like to put a border on your dishcloth we're going to continue and we have two rounds to put around our dishcloth to form our border we're going to begin our border by chaining one and you're going to turn your work you're going to skip the beginning chain one insert into that very first stitch work a single crochet now we're going to start a repeat you're going to chain one you're going to skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next stitch and that is the end of the repeat let's do it again chain one skip the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch chain one skip the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch I'll show you one more time chain one skip the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch so go ahead and continue you're going to chain one skip the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch repeat that across to the last stitch across the top and I'll meet you at the next corner so I'm over at my first corner of our border of round one we chained one skip the stitch and single crocheted into the next stitch and your repeat should end in the very last stitch now we're going to chain two for our corner one two and you just want to spin your dishcloth around and now we're going to be working into the row end stitches so if you are unsure where your row end stitches are just pull on your work and you're going to see how they open up these spaces right here will be your row end stitches so we're going to begin and we're going to work a single crochet into the very first row end stitch now remember the first row end stitch is right at the base of the stitches that you work so this is going to be our first row end stitch right here at the base of that single crochet insert right back into that space work a single crochet and then we're just going to repeat the pattern of chaining one you're going to skip the next row end stitch and single crochet into the next row end stitch chain one skip the next row end stitch single crochet into the next row end stitch let's do it again chain one skip the next row end stitch single crochet into the next row end stitch so go ahead and continue you're going to chain one skip the next row end stitch single crochet into the next row end stitch repeat that down the length to the next corner and I'll meet you there I'm over at my next corner I have two row end stitches remaining I'm going to chain one skip that next row end stitch and single crochet into the last row end stitch down the length and you're ending your repeat right into the end row you're going to chain two for your corner now we're going to start working across the bottom of our dishcloth now remember when we worked in the last chain across we worked two stitches so this is going to be the last chain right here you're going to insert into that chain it's going to be a little off to the side of this stitch so right here you're going to see that first stitch insert under the top two loops work a single crochet you're going to chain one skip the next chain and single crochet into the next chain chain one skip the next chain and single crochet into the next chain let's do it again chain one skip the next chain and single crochet into the next chain so go ahead and continue you're going to chain one skip the next chain 
and single crochet into the next chain. You're going to repeat that across to your next corner and I'll meet you there. I am over at my third corner. We just worked across the bottom of our dishcloth and I have one repeat to go. I'm going to chain one. You're going to skip the next chain and single crochet into that last chain across. You're going to chain two for the corner and then we're just going to spin our work around and start working down the length of our dishcloth. We're going to single crochet into the first row and stitch. So we're going below this stitch here and we're going right into this space right here. Work a single crochet. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip this next row and stitch. Insert into the next row and stitch. Work a single crochet. Chain one. Skip the next row and stitch single crochet into the next row and stitch. Chain one, skip the next row and stitch and single crochet into the next row and stitch. So go ahead and continue. You're going to chain one, skip the next row and stitch, single crochet into the next row and stitch. Repeat that down the length and I'll meet you at the next corner. I'm over at our last corner and we have two row end stitches remaining and then this is the beginning of our round one border so that's not a row end stitch we only are going to work in these two row end stitches so you're going to chain one skip the next row end stitch and single crochet into this next row end stitch which is at the base of that first beginning single crochet stitch we're going to chain two for the corner and now we're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of that beginning single crochet. You're going to skip that chain one, insert under the top two loops of the single crochet and then yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. So round one of our border is finished but we're on the wrong side of the dishcloth. So what we're going to do, let me zoom up, so now since we joined, what we're going to do is you're going to turn your work. So your yarn is going to be back here on top front. So all you have to do is just pull it towards the back behind your hook. And then you want to insert your hook into the corner chain two space and then yarn over, pull through that space and pull through the loop on your hook. So now we are ready to start round two of our border and we're going to begin by working down the length and around the other sides. So we're going to begin with a chain one and our beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work two half double crochet back into that corner chain two space, one and two. You're going to chain two to form the corner. Then you can just move those stitches over. And then we're going to work two more half double crochet back into the corner chain two space. One. And two. So when you look at your work, you chained one, which does not count as a stitch. You work two half double crochet, a chain two, and two half double crochet. So now we're going to be working into the chain one spaces only. You're going to skip the next single crochet and work two half double crochet into the next chain one space. One and two. Skip the next single crochet and work two half double crochet into the next chain one space. One and two. And we're going to repeat that down to our corner chain two space. You're going to yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next chain one space, work two half double crochets. One and two. So go ahead and continue. You're going to skip the next single crochet and work two half double crochet into that next chain one space one and two. 
So go ahead and continue. You're going to skip the next single crochet and work two half double crochet into the next chain one space and you're going to repeat that down to your corner chain two space and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner chain two space. You should have a single crochet and then your corner chain two space. So now we're just going to repeat what we've done on this side around the remaining three sides. So let me get you started. When you get to your corner chain two space, you're going to skip this next single crochet and work two half double crochet into that corner chain two space. One and two. You're going to chain two and then work two more half double crochet into the corner chain two space. One and two. So when you look at your work you're going to have two half double crochet, a chain two for the corner and two half double crochet all into the corner chain two space. And then we're just going to repeat working two half double crochet in each chain one space across to your next corner chain two space. So let me get you started working across. You're going to yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next chain one space, work two half double crochets, one and two. Skip the next single crochet and work two half double crochet into the next chain one space. One and two. Again, you're going to skip the next single crochet and work two half double crochet into the next chain one space. One and two. And that's all there is to the repeat. So go ahead and continue and work two half double crochet in each chain one space across to your corner chain two space. When you get to your corner chain two space, work two half double crochet, a chain two, and two half double crochet. Repeat that around and I'll meet you at the end of round two. I'm over at the end of round two of our border. We work two half double crochet in each chain one space and we work two half double crochet, a chain two and two half double crochet in each corner chain two space. So now we're going to join. We're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert under the top two loops of that first half double crochet, yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. Round two is finished. Our dishcloth is finished. I'm going to fasten off. Now I do like to leave a longer length because I use a yarn needle to weave in my ends. So I'm going to chain two, one, two, pull my hook up, yarn out, grab, pinch, and pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So now what I like to do, and I use the bigger yarn needle, and this is why I say always leave a longer length. So if you look at how long the needle is compared to the thread, you want to make sure you really have a long length because the needle is so big. So what I like to do is I just thread this end onto a yarn needle. And then I'm going to flip this over on the wrong side. And I just like to come down through. Now the corner has a lot of stitches. So what I'm going to do is spin this around. And then I'm just going to weave it down through the loop until I get to the base of these stitches. And then I'm just going to go through all those stitches at the base of the corner. You can see how many I'm going through. I pull my yarn needle through. I didn't have that length over there so let me get that through there and then I like to pull this knot down so it's not showing on the front it just comes down behind the work and then I'll skip one strand of yarn let me get up closer I'll skip one strand so it holds the yarn in place and then I come back through the stitches and then I try to come out that end stitch and then I even like to go through a third time. So I skip one stitch because if I go back through, you're just going to defeat what you just did. Your yarn's going to pull back through. So you want to skip just one stitch. 
and then take it through those stitches a third time and it just really helps give you a nice secure edge and then what I do is I just pull it so it's nice and snug and then you just want to trim that end off with your scissors and then repeat that to your other end with your yarn needle and weave that end in. So let me go ahead, weave in my ends and I'll be back and show you the finished dishcloth. So our dishcloth is finished. This is what the final dishcloth looks like. Just a very simple but pretty dishcloth. And you can see it looks pretty no matter what color of yarn you use. Just a really simple, beautiful stitch pattern. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by today, taking a little bit of time and crocheting with me. If you enjoyed this crochet tutorial, please make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the crochet fun here on Creative Grandma's channel. So until next time, stay inspired and happy crocheting everyone.